Welcome. 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 <laughs> The Thousand Doors Readathon is about to start. The weekend edition of the Thousand Doors Readathon is about to begin. I am so excited, but I'm also very tired. <laughs> I think you can tell by my face that I'm extremely tired today. If you don't know me, I'm a grandma. Being awake at midnight or like alert at midnight is not normal for me. It's almost midnight. The first prompts of the the weekend edition of the Thousand Dolls Readathon are about to open for everyone and start. I am so excited. I love this readathon. I think it's like the most fun readathon ever. Listen, not to toot our horn, our collective horn, but I love it. I love the readathon. I obviously know what my first prompt is, but I haven't watched Emma's or Tasman's. I don't know. See, I quite like my prompt. <laughs> Who that girl thinks she is? Disgusting, stupid little rat. So I don't know if I'll go with mine or if I'll go with one of theirs. If you don't know, by the way, Thousand Dolls Readathon is a kind of choose your own adventure star readathon that me and Emma and Tasmin host. I am relegated downstairs because my boyfriend is asleep upstairs. Like I said, we are we are we are old. So he's asleep where all my books are. But I grabbed four before I came down here that I think are like good lengths for, for a readathon. So I grabbed Blackout, which is like this anthology. If I disappear, which is a thriller with like this true crime podcasty element. I grabbed a graphic novel called Quarantine Comics. This is set, I believe, in like the first lockdown. It's just like a cute little comic book style thing. So that'd be really quick to read, which I, listen, that feels like a vibe. And this one's a little bit longer, but I grabbed Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Suguria. I'm really excited to read this. This is like a sapphic YA romance. So they're kind of like my, where my initial thoughts are of my like 2021 releases that I feel like are manageable in a readathon. I am going to be with you as the prompts go live and I will film myself um, watching Emma and Tasman's and then I'll decide whether I want to go with mine or one of theirs. <laughs> okay, change of plan. <laughs> I'm too tired to make a good decision right now. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to post a poll on my Instagram and Twitter now for in case I do my prompt and then I'm going to watch their prompts in the morning and decide then because I'll be much better for you and I'll be much better for me. Good morning. This was definitely the right decision. <laughs> I've looked at the polls that I put up for my prompt. If you don't know, my prompt was this meme. I mean, let me ask the audience. And so I put a poll up to ask the audience what I should read. And the winner of that is If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier. I don't know if I'm going to read this. That's not happening. All right. I'm going to go watch Emma and Tasmin's videos first and then we'll make a decision because I want to see what their prompts are. Okay, so let's watch Emma's prompt. My theme throughout this readathon is going to be games. So all of my prompts will be Ooh, games. around games. As you know, I just love Save. games. So for this first prompt, Ooh, we're going to play a little mini game okay. of Articulate. This okay, is so much fun. On nature. Okay. So the first prompt is going to be owl. owl. The word owl. All of our prompts are deliberately left super open for you to interpret them however you want. Okay, okay, so that's Emma's prompt. Ow, wisdom. Um... <laughs> Do you know what, honey? See you later. Take care, my love. <laughs> Call me a cab. I don't know. What would I read for that? I have no idea what I'd read for that. Let's find out what Tasman's prompt is. On to the important. Oh, give me the prompt. Okay. My first prompt for you guys is the Minor Skins live performance at the Eurovision 2021 final of their song Zite Aborni. If you haven't seen this, <laughs> you're in for a treat. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got Al, or we've got the Eurovision performance. Hang on. I'm just going to watch it again, but I can't put it in because copyright. <laughs> you can't hear this. <laughs> but I can. Here's the thing. I don't... Hmm. No. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna do Emma's prompt. I'm gonna take the idea of a night owl. You know, owls are associated with the night. And I'm gonna read Blackout by all these amazing authors because this is set at night in a blackout in New York. So I'm gonna read this. That's how I'm making the link. I feel like it's a good link. Owls, nighttime, night owl, Blackout. 
Okay, I'm gonna do Emma's prompt. I feel like this is what I need right now and it's only like 250 pages, not long at all. So I feel like we'll be able to read it quite fast. I'm actually gonna pop out now and go get my second vaccine. I'm hoping it doesn't knock me out for the readathon and I don't have any like bad reactions. <laughs> okay, vaccine went fine. I haven't actually started blackout yet, but we're just about to have our first live show with like reading sprints for the readathon. It's currently three o'clock. So I'm gonna start this now and I don't think it will take me that long to get through it. Close your eyes, get out of your skin. I haven't read any more than what I read in the live show, so I'm only 70 pages in. I love this. The obsession that I got with it was, was borderline unhealthy. I don't know how I'm going to integrate in society after this. <laughs> so, so far I've read The Long Walk Part 1, Mask Off, The Long Walk Part 2, and made to fit. So this is a anthology, not really anthology, it's a story, a collaboration story by all these black authors about a blackout in New York and there's all these kind of romance stories that are happening amongst the blackout. And we open with Tiffany D. Jackson's story and that's called The Long Walk. That's about this kind of ex-couple who both turn up to this company for an internship they both think they've got and it turns out only one of them can get it but just as they're about to find out who's got it the lights go out and uh, they have to you know walk back to where they live it's like the other side of New York they decide to walk back together and their story is going to kind of from what I understand is going to kind of take us through the rest of the story so they're kind of like passing one of the stories they maybe mention something so in the first one she mentions oh i can't imagine what it must be like for all the people trapped in the subway and then we cut to a story about people trapped in the subway and so they're taking us through the rest of the story and that's the only story that's in parts and all the other authors short stories are like singular blocks if that makes sense i'm loving it i think it's so much fun i think it's really really interesting i've read it so far so far i have never read from any of these authors apart from angie thomas but i do own Donya Clayton and Tiffany D. Jackson's stuff so I'm this is making me even more excited to read their stuff I'm really excited to read uh, Donya Clayton's story but I've really enjoyed Tiffany D. Jackson's one so far and I just think this is such a fun idea and all of the stories are kind of slightly interconnected so I listened to this podcast called First Draft Podcast they did an episode on there it's like a writing podcast and um, they spoke about how the father of the love interest in one of the stories is in another story and they're, they're all linked and a lot of the characters know each other and it's just super interesting. I'm loving it. I love the whole concept and I feel like this is such a great pick for readathon. I am going to go shower now and then I probably am just going to try and finish the whole rest of this thing this evening if I'm honest. Um, I'm really excited. I'm excited to just like take my makeup off, come into bed and finish the book. You may say I'm a dreamer I just love it. I love it already. I'm really, really enjoying it. I would recommend to you that you pick it up um, if you've been interested in it or kind of eyeing it up already. And I've only read 70 pages, so. <laughs> day two of the weekend edition. I finished Blackout this morning and I really really loved it. I'm gonna give it four stars. It just didn't have that like five star feeling but I would still really recommend this. Wait hang on let me shift over so you can see the queen herself. Ladies and gentlemen, her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, her. 
I loved this. I loved all the different romance stories. I loved how many different kinds of stories there were. There was so much sexual representation. There was some gender representation. It was just beautiful, a beautiful story. I really loved how all the stories kind of like flowed together and linked up to one another. And one thing that I think really sets this apart and makes it so great is that often with like if you have anthologies where it's lots of short stories they'll be quite different in tone like you'll feel very differently about some short stories some might be a five some might be a two you know but in this it was such a cohesive voice you almost couldn't tell the differences between the authors it was very slight you could but they were so cohesive and obviously the the vision that they had for this book and the kind of journey it was going to take on and they they worked on it together that it felt so cohesive in a way that kind of like collaborations often don't i think this is great if you love romance or if you don't typically read a lot of romances I think this would be great as well because they're just these kind of short meet cutes or little stories of like little moments and it teaches self-love and you know putting the importance of yourself above relationships I just really really loved it I think it was great I would really recommend it I need to find out what my next prompt is so I need to go back to Emma's video and click through I think the question is what star rating did you give it so I'll click through the four to five star door JK <laughs> my food has just arrived but there's this new bagel place that has just opened up in town and we've literally been waiting an hour I think my parents have been queuing a long time so I'm gonna go eat bagels and then I'll come back and choose my next book <laughs> I'm back <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> I had my bagel, so now we're going to um, see what my next prompt is! You ready, Lux? I'm excited. Back. You got I got Emma again! again. I'm so glad that you so enjoyed your last I did. book. That is great Woo. news. So let's see if I can do just as okay. well and give you a prompt for a second book that you're also going to enjoy. So the next game we're going to play... <gasps> this I love Dixit! Dixit. You have heard of Me this and my one. family it's play it popular a game as such a great game very so i'm gonna randomly select one of okay. these cards and that is gonna make up our next okay prompt. oh my god i'm nervous so this is the one here you go Ooh. So I'll let you look at it. i have an idea for this book so i feel like emma's gonna give some tips on how we could interpret it but i'm just gonna go with what my gut is i feel like this picture kind of looks like positivity in the hard times i think i associate a tree with no leaves, aka winter time, with sadness because seasonal depression. <laughs> the tree's kind of got like a half smile and he's got these flowers. So I think I'm going to try and pick a book. I'm saying this as if I have a book like that, but like positivity in difficult times. So I'm going to go look at my cart and I'll be right back. Okay, I managed to find one that I think is going to be perfect. So I'm going to read Quarantine Comics by Rachel Smith. This is a like comic book strip style graphic novel about lockdown and I think it, on the back it says an award-winning graphic memoir of lockdown life. Uh, Quarantine Comics is a funny, tender, heartfelt and insightful look at isolation and loneliness. So I feel like it's going to be looking at this hard time that we all struggled with, like lockdown, but kind of trying to look at the positive side of it or trying to look for the joy in such a difficult time. And I've wanted to read it for ages. This was very kindly sent to me by Icon Books. So thank you Icon Books for sending this my way. And I'm so glad I'm finally going to give it a read. I'm very excited. So we just finished the live show. How are we doing, cats? Good. So I finished Quarantine Comics by Rachel Smith. 
And I really love this, you guys. I'm gonna give this 4.5 stars. This was just such a great graphic novel. I loved the illustration style. The facial expressions were really great. That's always one of my favorite things and is really important to me in my enjoyment of a graphic novel is the facial expressions of the characters. I think it makes such a big difference. If I love the facial expressions, it just makes me love the book. Simple as. When a graphic novel has cute facial expressions. Sorry, this is incredible. Mm, 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 mm. And there's um, her cat in this as well. The cat like talks and is a character and I think it's super cool. And also her depression is this like, hang on, is it a dog? An imaginary dog called Barky. And yeah, it kind of takes us from the start of lockdown in the UK through all the way to like, I guess like the end of last year, the end of 2020. And it's, you know, it's funny, it's heartwarming, but it's, you know, it's relatable because it's dealing with the bad kind of mental health side of and difficulties that a lot of us struggled with in lockdown. So the duality of it, I really appreciate. And I, I think that's useful when it's talking about such a difficult topic. We're all going through similar things and it's, it's really important that we talk about it. Such a um, insightful look at loneliness, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So it's time to find out what I'm going to be reading as my last book. I think the question is, was the ending satisfying? And this doesn't really have an ending because it's not like your traditional story. But I think I'm still going to say yes because I liked the epilogue. Oh, it's Welcome me! To your Hi, me! Third door, your Let me just scrub through actually and find not out what the meaning only is. is. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. Okay, this is one of my this is one of my favorite favorite memes. So obviously for this, you would typically choose a mystery. Here's the thing with a lot of my mysteries, like I feel very protective of them, that I wanna read them at the best time. And let me tell you right now, I am tired. <laughs> I didn't sleep well last night from the vaccine and I am just exhausted. Okay, I've picked what I'm gonna read and it's actually what you guys voted for me to read if I'd start with my prompt in the first place <laughs> for Thousand Doors. And that's If I Disappear by Alayda Jane Brazier. This is about this woman who loves true crime podcasts, but her favorite podcast host, Appears. She travels to where that woman was living to try and find her. Now this hasn't got great reviews. It's got like something like a 3.1 average rating on Goodreads, which is low. So people haven't been loving it. So I am a bit tentative to read it, but sometimes I find I do disagree with everyone and end up loving books that everyone else hated. Am I quirky? Am I silly? Good morning. Whoa. It's Lex. I love you. Whoa, okay, no. I am about 100 pages into If I Disappear, and it's okay. Like, it's, it's a good, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> So basically we are following this woman who's obsessed with these true crime podcasts and the woman who does the true crime podcasts goes missing and she decides I'm going to go find her house, the farm that her family lives on and I'm going to go pretend to, you know, I want to work for them and I'm going to infiltrate them to find out the truth. That's suspicious. That's weird. She's like a bit obsessed with the woman who does the true crime podcast. So it's a bit like unreliable narrator, I think. And I am feeling like that's the route we're gonna go down. I'm not sure I can really trust the narrator is what I'm feeling right now. I don't know, I just nothing is, I'm a bit bored. <laughs> I'm just feeling a bit bored and not, 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 not very interested. I've been feeling like this a lot with thrillers and mysteries lately. I've just been a bit bored. The atmosphere of the farm isn't interesting me enough and just nothing's really grabbed me yet. But also I'm listening to the audiobook as well and they haven't taken advantage of the podcast element. Each chapter opens with a section of one of the podcasts and also we occasionally have snippets from the podcast. I just feel like we could put like a sound over that and make it sound like it's a podcast or something. Like I feel like we do something because it's just not really grabbing me yet. I'm not feeling that interested. I need it to amp up a bit because I'm not super engaged in it right now. Besties. This book was bad. It was bad. It's actually the next day. Because it took me so long to read this because I hate it. <laughs> oh my god. T Central over here. I should have actually DNF'd it. This was a struggle to get through and it is short. 
I I just don't even want to talk about it. You know when you've read, okay, sometimes I read a book and it's so bad, I'm excited, you know, I'm excited to talk about it. And sometimes I read a book and it's so bad, I don't even want to discuss it. I don't want to discuss the experience of reading this. It was so boring. It was so boring. Like it was, it was, it was so boring. The twist was annoying. There was nothing that had led up to it and yet it was predictable at the same time. I knew that was where we were going, the whole book, but like we didn't set it up for that. How can it be both things at once? That doesn't compute. I had the audiobook and the physical book and I was still bored. That sensory like, you know, I've got all my senses covered and I'm still bored. How is that even possible? I don't understand. I was angry. I was angry. And I'm just annoyed. I'm just annoyed because I wanted to love it. It had a podcast element, but the podcast wasn't taken advantage of. If you're gonna bring in that gimmick, let's at least have fun. Do you know what I mean? Let's at least go for something, but we didn't go for anything. So I wouldn't recommend this book. It hasn't got very good reviews and I can understand why. I just felt like the ending, yeah, it was just like a cheap ending for me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said it. I literally have nothing to say because I literally switched my brain off when I read this book. I was that bored. I was that bored. I generally have no thoughts. Like, <laughs> and we end A Thousand Doors on a disappointing end. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the readathon anyway. I still had pretty good reads for my first two. They were still great reads, but this one, it was just bad. Make sure you let me know down below if you're participated or maybe if you're still participating. There's no real like time limit on this. The prompts will be up forever. You can do it as many times as you want. But yeah, I hope you had a lot of fun. We had so much fun hosting it. I love it. I love A Thousand Doors. I love interacting with you all, like having fun reading together, doing the live shows. So I still had a lot of fun, even if this last book was like a struggle to get to and I feel like it's ruined my life a little bit. Like I feel like it's like put me in a bit of a life slump. It's gone now, she's over. I'm gonna read some middle grade, I think, to kind of cleanse my soul. I feel like I need that. And yeah, I'll see you guys very soon with another video. And thank you so much again for taking part. Bye.